That guy right there looks like a gangster. I mean, that's very, very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> interesting choice. Interesting choice. All right. This is a final suspect lineup, ladies and gentlemen. I will go down the line and ask each question or each suspect a series of final questions to try to suss out who is the true killer amongst them. Starting with you, Maid Luna. Maid Luna. You seemed like the most suspicious person here when we first started this investigation. Me? Yes, you. And now you seem pretty much off the hook. But you're still up here because you're still suspicious. So, this billionaire's game, you tried to expose it, you tried to end it, and it sort of ended poorly. I think it ended. I think it's over. We're not, you're not ever going to play this game again, are you? No. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna call the cops. <laughs> uh, well, that'll have to be a different set of authorities because technically I didn't actually see anything bad happen, so I can't do anything about it. Regardless, uh, maybe Luna, are you gonna keep working with the Billionaires Club then? Oh no, my time here is done. I am officially resigning as head maid of the Billionaires Club. I can't take it anymore. I'm gonna move somewhere where there's no rich jerks and money doesn't matter. Good That's luck. Right, everybody. I'm moving to Portland, Oregon. <laughs> 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 Very much, but, but you are going to stay and finish on your shift, correct? I guess. Okay, well, I would give Maid Luna take a round of applause <coughs> as she gets back to her uh, maybe business. All right, um, you know, now that I think about it, that didn't actually really uh, answer any questions <laughs> I have lingering. Um, however, uh, Reginald Salvex III. Sir Reginald. Sir Reginald Salvex III. Reggie, you are a very bitter, bitter man. Uh, especially about Sal Fee. Do you have anything you can possibly <laughs> Do you have anything to say that could possibly shed away some guilt? Because you're looking pretty suspicious, my friend. No, but I will give you some truth. I told you that uh, Sal Fee was a <laughs> cad and a liar. I have evidence that he stole the Busy Bee app. <gasps> Yes. Oh, news! Are, are you certain? Let me see this evidence you have here. The logo, the software, the user interface? Yes. All stolen. <gasps> You're right, these do look very similar. Busy B and B Busy. <laughs> who owns B Busy? Why, that would be ridiculous. Ridiculous! Well, 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 ridiculous. <clears throat> Is this true? Did Southie steal your app design and. <laughs> <laughs> and profit out of it? He did. Yes. Well, this, this must have made you very mad at him, very angry. I, he did. Uh, I, I designed it, I made it, I did it all, and he stole it from me. And of course, I didn't get any money from the whole situation. Oh. And that made you mad. Very upset. Mad very upset. Kill him? I was just about to ask, mad enough to kill? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. Well, what do you what do you think of your future plans now? Things look very suspicious for you. Things are you I mean, you're basically gonna leave this party and just go back to your mother's basement, go back to poverty. What's what are the plans looking like for, for ridiculous from here on out? Well, I just been informed by the attorneys that uh, upon Sal's death I inherited all the money. Oh. Wait, wait, you're you're saying that Sal Fee, even though he stole your design, even though he effectively ruined your life, he gave you it all up? But he gave it all up and gave it to you upon his death? It was part of the agreements with the attorneys. Huh. And you just learned about this, right? Like, just five minutes ago or so? Correct. Huh. Oh, well, that's, that's a pretty fortunate turn of fortune. Uh, I would give ridiculous a round of applause. <laughs> oh, and... <laughs> oh, and, oh, and, oh, and Reggie, a round of applause to you, because without him, you wouldn't have this information. You two can go sit down. Uh, Reggie, go do your billionaire business. This is a very important piece of evidence, though, ladies and gentlemen. This will go up on the evidence table. <laughs> Bang! Right there. Evidence. Speaking of evidence, Juan, Juan Tidman, yes. the butler. Yes. Now, on principle, I should, I should arrest you because, you know, the butler did it. But do 
you have any evidence that could prove otherwise, or any evidence that could point the finger to someone else, don't, so. maybe expose yeah. yes, lies, yeah. bring truth yes, to the world? Yeah, everything's done. Okay. Yes, okay. Well, I, I have a badge here, and I have handcuffs in my pocket if you don't comply with me, sir. Is it real cool? Yes. Oh, I actually do. I did some investigation. Oh. And the doctor used a forged ticket to enter the party. Forged tickets? Yes. I have the original that she used, and the correct one below. Let me, let me see these real quick. So this above is the fake pass, and below is the real pass. Very interesting indeed. Thank you, Juan. You stay up here for a moment as I talk to the doctor. Dr. Feel Good. Is this true, doctor? Did you forge your ID? Yeah, I did. So you're not actually a billionaire? Do you have any other bits of information that could possibly point some blame away from you, or maybe anything that could help this investigation? Things are not looking good for you, Doc. Well, people are saying that I must be the killer because I have access to the Denver office. But that's just not true. It's not like I lock my drug cabinet or take inventory. And I leave my, I leave my patients in there all the time by the <laughs> Doctor, you're saying that your drug cabinet is unlocked for your patients to just Use to their whims? Uh, no, they can't use it. It's just a <laughs> <sighs> All right. Um, thank you, Doctor. Everyone, let's give Doctor Fieldman a round of applause, and let's give Juan Fieldman a round of applause. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, this is also a very important piece of evidence, ladies and gentlemen. This will also go up on the evidence table. Hey, evidence. <laughs> And then there were, then there were five. <laughs> With these five individuals, I gotta ask. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Actually, one moment, please. I gotta take a break from the investigation for a second. <laughs> I am so excited for my autograph later, Ella. I am, I am, I, you can, you can, like, uh, do, can I autograph anything? Can I autograph my badge? Can I autograph uh, my handcuffs? Can I autograph my coat? I, uh, <clears throat> I mean, uh, Ella, uh, you know, you are also a suspect in this murder investigation, and uh, as such, uh, you know, I have to question you and ask for any important information you may provide. Uh, do you have anything that could help me in this investigation? Well, you, you know, um, Jessica is not who she says she is. What? <laughs> She's actually an author who writes mystery, mysteries about death. Oh, murders. Murders. And it seems that everything she's written has actually happened and she's been present when it has. Do you have any, do you have any physical evidence to corroborate the story? I do, but I, I'm sorry, I left the table, I will get that. Oh, I can grab it for you. Oh, okay, okay. okay, okay. I pulled up high, baby man. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I think it's in the page three of your binder. There it is! <gasps> it looks like a newspaper article, possibly. Yes. <laughs> All right. Murder. She planned. It seems that each and every mystery she has written is based on an actual murder that happened in real life. You are correct. This is true. There is only one person who brought her here today, Enrique Estrada. <laughs> Enrique, did you know who Jessica Fletcher was when you brought her to this party? Yes, I did. <gasps> Why did you bring her to this party, Enrique? Jessica Flesher is a beautiful woman who writes murder mysteries based on murder she herself was present for. It is no coincidence that she is here and Sal is dead. So sorry, Jessica. Clearly, you are guilty. Wait, Enrique, you're, you're basing that assumption just on the fact that she was close to the murder? I agree. 
time she's present, uh, someone dies. Okay. Um, not the best logic, but you are pretty, so that makes up for it. Uh, everyone, give, give it a big round of applause. Give Ella a round of applause. Then we'll sit down and get away from this, this albatross made manifest. And albatross is an unlucky bird. It's a metaphor, you see. Jessica, is this true? Are you not exactly who you say you are, but in fact something different? Okay, sure, yeah. I'm not an insurance adjuster. I am a murder mystery writer. And I just want to thank you all so much for being a part of my 187th murder that I just happened to be present for. And uh, so, you know, I'm going to write my 187th book. And it's just, you know, it's just a really big coincidence that these things just keep happening around me. And uh, Enrique, I'm really disappointed that you just invited me for that reason and that there's no romance. But what can you do, right? I'm sorry, you lost me at the 187 separate murders that you were present for. Sure, sure, separate but unrelated. Separate but unrelated, okay. Um, cool. Uh, you know what? Everyone give just got a round of applause. At least she's all been in honor. Uh, yeah, you're a star of it. Um, um, this is also a very important piece of evidence. This will also go on the evidence table, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, bam, evidence. Okay. Uh, and then there were two. <laughs> Bertha. Every time the deceased was mentioned, you cried. And every time you looked at the deceased, you seemed overflowing with joy. I have a one question to ask. Did you like Sal? Very much. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, honestly, that didn't seem that, you know, far-fetched. I mean, every time I say Sal B, you start crying. Like, oh my god, that's right. Okay. Bertha, please. Is there anything you could possibly say that could, or tell me that could, um, I don't know, help this investigation? Maybe help me find who the true killer is. Well, you know that Lincoln, no good, worthless husband of mine, I know he's been researching on poison, and you know he owns this costume shop. <laughs> you all have costumes from him! Masks, uh, specifically. And masks, yes. Okay, so you're saying your husband was looking up poison? On his computer, studying it. He was studying poison on his personal computer, and... Sal died of some sort of poison. You think those are related? Definitely. Gasp. Well, I guess I should talk to this husband of yours, Mort. Now, where is Polyphus? Mort! Mort Peacock, is this true? Were you looking up poisons on your personal computer at home? Yes. <gasps> Why were you looking up poisons? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Would you need your binder? What? Would you want your binder? No. 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 <laughs> Who do you is worthless? We need to read one of the next master clues. Do you have any clues? Oh, not that one. Today I was given a great gift by the late Sal Fee to grounds for a proper divorce. Uh, I declare today it's divorce for you and freedom for me. Well, uh, that's kind of unexpected, but you know what? It seemed like this relationship was kind of uh, not healthy, to say the least. So you know what? I think this might be a good thing for everybody involved. Let's give the unhappy couple a round of applause. <laughs> and then you can back to Wait, what were we doing? Oh, that's right, we we're solving a murder. Okay. Um, wow, there's a lot of information floating around, and I think we have all the evidence we need to solve this crime tonight. So, ladies and gentlemen, right now my associates will be moving around the tables and they will be handing out their final sentencing sheet. Once you get your final sentencing sheet, I want you to hold it high up in the air. I enough for everybody to see. Once you have this sheet, you will need to put three things on this sheet. Number one, we'll need to put a team name on this sheet. Be quick, be creative. Number two, 
me to put the killer on this sheet. There has been one death, one crime, one killer. And number three, and most important of all, you need a motive and an opportunity. You see, a lot of the suspects here have a motive. A lot of the suspects here have an opportunity. Your one true killer has both. So, once you have this paper, you will have five minutes to write down who your one true killer is. You will have one chance to be detectives of the night. Once you have that paper, you can begin writing. And you will start now.